Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Jellycomb KE68 multi-device ergonomic keyboard. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful, I'll put a link below to where you can get one of these on Jellycomb's website. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also include my promo code in the description and that will get you an extra 10% off. So this is a multi-device keyboard and it supports 2.4 gigahertz for one device and then Bluetooth for two other devices. So here's the keyboard. I have a manual here. And it comes with a USB-C charging cable. Since this supports Bluetooth, it supports Mac, PC, Android, Linux. This would work with Fire TV Stick. Pretty much any system that can work with Bluetooth keyboards. But this also works with devices that support USB keyboards because it has a dongle that you can plug in to run over 2.4 gigahertz. So let's look at this up close. You can see here we have keys that are labeled for Mac or Windows. So this says Option or Windows button or Command or Alt. So these keys are concave and the regular keys are convex, but it's very subtle. It has function button here to access the function keys. Now the function keys have options on it for like brightness. There's like cut, paste, copy, that's I think select all, and here's the volume button here. Now that's mute. Uh, volume would probably be here, I think. So that's a nice feature that you have those media keys and other function keys there. It has a numeric keyboard. The cursor keys are an inverted T. Up here we have the devices. This one's probably the USB. This one's probably Bluetooth 1 and 2. On the bottom of this, looks like we have four feet. So that gives you three different modes. You can have this flat, you can lift the back up, or you can lift the front up. I guess you could lift all of them up too. So let's look at it from this angle here. You can see it raises up in the middle, and this is a split keyboard, and it has this faux leather wrist padding here. Then here on the back we have the dongle that you could plug in. So this is a nice feature. So if you have a Mac or PC that doesn't have a keyboard, and you may need to, say, set up this keyboard as Bluetooth, or get into the BIOS settings, you may need a USB keyboard anyway. Well, this has the capability of being a USB keyboard. So you might just stick this in to do the setup and then switch it over to Bluetooth, and that's fine. But it's nice having that ability. So this fits in the bottom, it magnets on here, then it has on-off switch. So it has rubber feet on the four corners, and then there's rubber on the flip-up legs. So here's the instruction manual. Looks like we have the power indicator is in the middle of the keyboard here. The caps lock indicator is on the caps lock key. And I was correct, that is the 2.4 gigahertz connection on that button. So the simple way to use this is to take out that receiver, plug it into your computer, and press this button here, and that will connect you up using the 2.4 gigahertz connection. And of course, turn it on. So for Bluetooth, it says push the power switch to on, choose any Bluetooth connection, single press the button to choose, the white indicator flashes once you enter the Bluetooth mode, long press for three to five seconds again, when the white indicator is flashing quickly, it enters Bluetooth pairing mode. Then you want to go into your system and set that up. So this is the mode switching method. It says after connecting, short press the keyboard connection button to easily switch between multiple mode devices. So this talks about charging, it says when the power too low, the white status button of one of the connections will flicker until shut down. Please connect power supply to charge in time to ensure that the keyboard has enough battery to meet normal work. If the keyboard power is too low, there will be some delays, freezes, and other phenomena in typing, which will affect normal use. The power indicator turns red while charging and turns to green after two to three hours when there's a full charge. So this talks about the media function buttons. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I found, generally speaking, these do the same things on all systems. And here are the specs here. Things to note are the battery capacity is 280 milliamp hours. The rest time. It goes to sleep after 30 minutes of no operation. The battery life is 1000 charge and discharge cycles. The button life is 3 million keystrokes. Standby time is 200 hours. Awake mode, press any key to wake up. Effective distance is within 8 meters. The working current is less than or equal to 3 milliamps. And the size is 423.8 by 231.4 by 27.7 millimeters. Here's some tips here. Talks about the sleep mode. So let's connect this up and try this out. So I'll turn it on first and I want to connect using Bluetooth. So I'll press the Bluetooth one button and that enabled that channel. And then I'll hold it down until the light starts flashing quickly. Okay, maybe tricky to see there, but it's flashing quickly. So now on my Mac, I'll go to system preferences. I'll go to Bluetooth and the keyboard should show up here. There it is, I'll hit connect. It says BT plus 2.4 G KB. I hit connect. Okay, it's connected. So on the keyboard here, I'll hit command tab. We should see the application switcher. I'll hit command spacebar. I'll type in pages. 
I'll choose new document. Now I can type. This is a test. So let's try some of these special keys here. So these are the brightness keys. And if I press them, nothing's happening on the Mac. So what you can do is you can hit function escape and that will lock it on. And then when I press those keys, it will work. If you want to adjust the volume, you can press these keys here in the middle. So that will adjust the volume. And then you can also hit play and forward and previous track. F6 here is search, so that brings up spotlight. F11 is mute. Some of these, I don't think F12 does anything. That's a home, so that's not gonna do anything on the Mac. F4 brings up your application switcher. F5 does expose. F3 also does an expose thing. And then you have your cut and paste buttons over here. So now let's say we want to hook this up to a second computer. And for that one, I'll use the dongle. So I'll pull this out of the bottom and then I'll plug this into the PC. Now on the keyboard, I'll hit the 2.4 gigahertz button. So that's lit up now. I think this PC is in suspend mode, so I'll hit the button to turn it on. Okay, it's asking me to log in. So I typed the password in on this keyboard. So I can type the win tab and we have the application switcher and there's nothing really open right now but Chrome. I can hit F6 for search. I can open up Notepad. I can type in there. Now some of these special function keys aren't going to work, like the brightness won't work here because this isn't a laptop that allows it. So that would work on laptops or all-in-one computers. The search did work. The copy and paste would work. The volume up down will partially work, although the audio is coming through on this. So that would work better on a laptop. And we have like F4, F5, that brings up application switchers. F3 brings up Windows. And then we have copy and paste. What does home bring up? I'm not sure exactly what that did. And then you have the screenshot here. This will take a screenshot. And that did work on the Mac, I tried it. So I think this is a very versatile keyboard. You can use it with so many different devices. I like that it's an ergonomic keyboard, so you can have a more natural typing position. I know some people like ergonomic keyboards, some don't. I use both, and I like both types. But probably one of my favorite features is this has that USB dongle on it. So I can use this with Bluetooth computers, but I have that USB dongle in cases where I need to access the BIOS, or if you have a new computer and you're trying to set it up and you need a keyboard for the setup, prior to setting up Bluetooth, you can do that with this keyboard. So that's the Jellycomb ergonomic keyboard. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.